Hello, and welcome to the Gnostic Correspondence Study of Revolutionary Psychology. By the Gnostic Master, Samael Onvior. This is a series of talks that will include reflections, exercises, and practices to help aid and deepen your understanding of this great work. Chapter 3 Psychological Rebellion quickly because I want to get to practice time through the this third chapter called psychological rebellion but first I want to share something that one of our teachers often says that, that where our attention is that is where our being is because we we need to really understand this this personal responsibility that we have and this relationship that we have with our own spirit because in that we are here as the, the human delegate for our being, for our own spirit. And, and it's not that we're separate things. It's just that the spirit can't be here without my consent, without my cooperation. It, it doesn't really get to manifest. It, it can send a spark of itself as the essence it's the light that we see lit up in an infant, right? That pure, awake, present essence. But then we have to, in time, we have to make the choice to keep allowing that essence to develop and grow such that really more and more of our spiritual values and, and ways of perceiving are able to be here and manifest through us. So that's the purpose of being human, and we're perfectly constructed for that actually, well, the being is relying on us to enable that, relying on us to make that choice, to open our minds, to open our ears, to open our hearts, and to set aside the envies and the jealousies and the preoccupations and the vanities so that our personality becomes a vehicle for the essence, so that the, the spirit, the being can manifest through this personality, this user interface with the rest of the world. And so that it can manifest in my way of thinking and feeling and acting. And that's when we become a Buddha. That's how a Buddha becomes. That's what a Buddha is, is one who is really open, like the upturned Buddha's bowl, to the ways of perceiving thinking, feeling, behaving, speaking of the being to manifest within that human vehicle. And so the, the being is, is needing that for, from us. And where I put my attention is where the consciousness and therefore the being ends up, whether it's into a vanity, a preoccupation, an envy, a jealousy, or not. And so in that way, the, the being is tied to me and my choices as a person and and often patiently waiting for many many lifetimes for someone to be at a point when this this relationship can really be active between oneself and their own innermost being and and if you're here listening to a teaching like this then then that relationship is active the being is saying yes and you are saying yes and so that's why Jeffrey and I are here and doing this and our teachers have been here and doing this and the community is here and doing this to give us encouragement, to give us hope, to give us methods for how to keep saying yes and to say it in a, in a stronger and stronger way every day. Because we've got the purpose, the being, the means, the work. We need the method 
the practices, the teachings themselves, the techniques that we utilize in and out of meditation. And we have all that in a school. That's why the importance of a school, because it, a school that's actually on a path of self-realization, because it gives us all of that. It gives us that which we need. And, and by being present, that is to be in the Tao, to be in the middle, we allow the consciousness to be present through us by being present. And there's this um, quote from a book called The Principles of Sufism, which expressed this really well. The best act of worship is watchfulness of the moment. That is that the servant not look beyond his or her limits, not contemplate anything other than his Lord or inner being and not associate with anything other than the present moment. So the best act of worship is to be in this moment. And that's the only way we are in an act of worship, actually, is to be really present in the moment. And this is all an act. What we're talking about is, is the title of the third chapter of Psychological Rebellion. This is what we could call psychological rebellion. It is revolutionary psychology. It is not the psychology we were raised on, most likely, I'm assuming. <laughs> but that's mostly, mostly true. And we've talked about this in, in the previous chapter, that a mathematical point exists within us, as he says. Unquestionably, that point is never found in the past or in the future. Whoever wants to discover that mysterious point must look for it here and now within oneself at this exact moment. So again, where are you right now? What is the level of being right now? And to keep returning to that question, not as a mental thinking again, but as an awareness. Am I in this moment? What's trying to take me out of this moment right now? teachers that we've been in touch with recently who who actually led our um, we, we call it a monastery it's a you know a tradition in this teaching of before you go off and teach you've gone through some training within with your own teachers and within your own school for a while and then we have this approximate three month intensive or monastic type of retreat in which we're there's lots of studying and learning and, and meditating as well but at the end, our teachers that were the abbots of that missionary course, we were having our final conversation with them at that point. And one thing that they said that really stuck with us is don't be swallowed by life. Speaking to us and knowing, you know, they were going back to, to their lifestyle in which they are not swallowed by life and just really from their hearts saying that to us like don't let yourself be swallowed by life because we can all see that potential that possibility to get really consumed and swallowed by life and so and that's what's normal you know that's what's normal and that's why this is revolutionary because it's normal to be totally swallowed and consumed by life and we certainly face that um Life's taking a few bites. Life's taking some bites. Yeah, <laughs> life's bites. taking some bites. <laughs> it does take some bites. But as it says here, the vertical is the path of intelligent rebels or revolutionaries. When one remembers oneself and works on oneself, when one does not become identified with all the problems and the sorrows of life, in fact, one is traveling along the vertical path. That is revolutionary, to not become identified with all the problems of life is revolutionary. In fact, it's, it's offensive sometimes to our friends and loved ones because we're not 
commiserating in, in the way that they that their that their ego would like us to, you know, and that we're not feeling swallowed by problems is really important. And this is the, the practice, the work, the didactic that we call non-identification. And somebody else is great teaching called non-objection in the Tao that we'll share, that we'll share. But non-objection in the Tao to, to commit to not objecting. That is revolutionary to not complain or object and to stay in the Tao because it that kind of practice, though it's it's very tempting completely justifiable of course we can justify complaining about things of course and it seems silly not to you know well, what are you going to be a doormat we often hear that well what are you going to let people walk all over you and and we go to the the mind goes to these dualistic extremes like i'm either barking back or i'm getting walked all over and those are the only options right and because we we lack being in the moment in the Tao and the dynamic stillness of the moment. It's a dynamic place to be where everything becomes possible instead of just this or that. At best, two possibilities with a thinking mind because it's dualistic, whereas in the dynamic stillness of the present moment, there are myriad possibilities. And so that's where real solution comes from, really. And he says, certainly, it is never an easy task to eliminate negative emotions, right? <laughs> to lose all identification with our own train of life, with all types of problems. Whoever learns how to transform mechanical reactions is, in fact, entering this vertical path. And this represents a fundamental change in our level of being, an extraordinary result of psychological rebellion or revolutionary psychology. So we're gonna sit for just a little bit because I only left a little bit to sit. <laughs> and this was the kickoff, so we'll take less, less time in the intro next time. But let's just sit and uh, reflect for a few moments now, gently closing our eyes, or you can leave your eyes open and, and gently gazing at a non-distracting point before you. and connecting with your breathing. Relaxing your face, your neck, your shoulders. Letting go of thoughts, letting go of distractions, letting go of past and future. employing four-part breathing where we inhale, a deep, long inhale, pause and let ourselves feel the fullness of that breath for a moment, and then exhale completely and pause again, letting ourselves be empty for a moment. Inhale, pause, exhale, pause. And with this aid of the breathing and the prana and our relaxation, let us simply be in this moment for a few moments. Be present, noticing what wants to take you out of the moment and saying, no, thank you, not right now. Staying with the breath, staying with your pure present awareness, no need to think.
patience and serenity are virtues needed to go onward in this path of radical transformation. And we practice with as much patience and serenity and also persistence as we can in and out of meditation. Patience, serenity, and also persistence. And let's finish this practice with a nice deep inhalation down towards the belly and a thorough exhalation, opening our eyes and coming back together. So that practice itself is a, is a great practice to do throughout the day simply regather ourselves relax connect with your breathing and just a few minutes of four part breathing and we create that center of gravity in a moment we elevate our level of being in a moment we bring ourselves into that present point of the moment right so so that's a great practical practice that we can take away as well as the reflections